Hey everyone and welcome to Almost Cancelled, I'm Peter, that is Connor and this is our weekly TV news video. It is the first episode, in fact, of 2018. So, 2018 episode 1. I it. like that you took half a second there to think what year is it before you said that, just to make sure you got it right. Hey, it's always hard when you transition to a new year. Especially, no, no, it not, is. Not so much now, but I remember in school you used to always write the date, I mean, the start of every day. And you're, yeah. Like I remember the first couple of weeks in January, you always wrote down the the, the previous year out of habit. Yeah, it was fine some years because it was like really like fixable, but other years it's like nah nah that's a bitch that just looks wrong now. Oh yeah, when you, if you went from like, like uh, five to six isn't too bad. Yeah, one to two is okay as well, but if you were going from like say seven to eight, it's like nah that's going to look like a mess. Yeah, it, it's it's just going to be screwed. In fact, 8 to 9 is even worse, because 8 to 9, like, you have to take away more than you're adding. <laughs> yeah, yeah. What a tangent to start on. So what yeah. do we do on this show? We talk about <laughs> we, the, we We tangent bollocks. We, ta- we tangent a lot, but we talk about uh, what happened in the week's TV news. This one's a little bit weirder, of course, because this is after a couple of weeks off, because we took Christmas and New Year's off. We've not had an episode in... Well, we had two weeks off, so it's been three weeks since the last episode. So all the news that we felt was relevant... Or I felt was relevant because I'm the yeah, one who yeah, compelled I, I, it. I'm sure there's something that he's missed, and because he's awful. Shut up. Uh, so there'll be so there'll be news going back a few weeks here. Uh, although there was a quite rightly, and the reason why we take the break there, of course, a is so we can do our end of year special stuff, but b because it's a quieter time for news. And there was a couple of things spread out, but there was definitely like a week in the middle of that two week gap that was just had nothing because I was going just back through the dates to get the news articles, yeah, yeah, yeah. and there was just like a jump from like. Uh, like just after Christmas to like about five days before Christmas, there was just nothing in that. It's funny because after we talk, you know, after we finished recording the last one a few weeks ago, we were like, okay, you know, we will do uh, that for the next like three or four days. I kept seeing things. I'm like, shit, there's, there's quite a lot here that that yeah, I'd already expected it to have stopped by that point. Uh, no, I'm happy to say it's not actually. It's the last few individual weeks have had bigger amounts of news than what we've got for this one and this is like a few weeks combined so yeah you know so we're starting off a bit slow although the tcas did start today uh so we've only had one panel of stuff uh come out that from fx so we'll have some stuff from that in the news today uh but next week we should have some stuff from all the various other tca days because uh, i think cbs is tomorrow not that we get a lot of good stuff from cbs but uh oh, no. you never know they could they could announce that they're giving up on everything and you know and then i think it's like CWs on Sunday, and I can't remember the order after that, but you know, they're all that'll, that'll be interesting to see if we get the renewals this year because we did last year. We from did, CW. we got a lot of them, uh, and they might be feeling confident because they got all the boosts from the crossover just before Christmas, so they might, yeah, they might do they it. Might. I always like knowing getting into the last chunk of the season that we're already renewed, it's a nice feeling. I like, I like knowing at least before I finish the episode, the finale, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. The last episode is like, okay, was that it? <laughs> is there more? <laughs> No, that's always a concern. So we talk about the news, obviously, and we also pick our favourite episode of TV of the week at the end of the show. That's, that's obviously a bit of a weird time of the year to do that, but, you know, I'm sure we'll we'll pick a favourite Black Mirror or... Uh, well, that's it. It's essentially everything since the last one is is, is valid, right? I never, I never thought about it, but yeah, I guess it is, so... I mean, even if you go the last week, that's all of Black Mirror and, what, half of Travellers? Yeah. Pretty much, and an episode which is, of Runaways. Which is an episode of Runaways. Yeah. Which, let's be honest, even if we go all the way back to the last news, it's it's mostly going to be Travelers and 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 Black Mirror. Pretty much. So it's a weird time. So I, I don't know what we'll do at that section this this time, but we'll 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 say something of some relevance yeah. to someone. But but in case you didn't notice, we've been watching Travelers and Black Mirror. Yeah, obviously. Is that your way of segueing me into t- you giving them the updates and what's going on? I is thought it? I thought I'd be give you a hand. That'd be nice uh-huh. and helpful. Yeah, start the year off strong. Instead, I just feel like you're just stepping on my toes, and you're just yeah. you're shoving your nose, your big fat ginger nose, where it doesn't belong. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I did that too. That's always fun. <laughs> I tell a lie. It's not. It's not big and fat. It's, it's more. It's more thin and pointy. More of a stabby looking nose. Yeah, I've got a hurt. rounder nose. I've got. I've got a rounder tip. You. You, you look quite. Okay. I, do, I do know how to look. I don't really look at my nose very often, to be honest. I don't really <laughs> think about it. <laughs> it's, not, it's not something I paid much attention to. It's just kind of there. But then every time you look at yourself in the mirror, you go. I'll, I'll be nose. honest. It's kind of hidden by the ginger. So, <laughs> <laughs> D- 
it, it, it distracts from anything else. So what, what has been happening then in those weeks in terms of stuff? Obviously, Black Mirror and Travelers are the two big things, both from Netflix. Uh, we've been enjoying both of those. We finished Black Mirror. Uh, the last review of that's already up. Uh, Travelers, we have eight reviews up of twelve. Uh, the ninth one is recorded and will be up uh, during Saturday uh, at some point. So uh, actually, yeah. yeah. Actually, I think on that review I said we wouldn't have one on Saturday and the next one would be Sunday, but I, f- I kind of forgot that that one probably wouldn't got till Saturday, so that makes that whole message moot. Uh, never mind. Uh, so, here here we are. Uh, so, we, in terms we, of we other did, things... We did, we did Doctor Who as well. Sure. <laughs> did the Christmas special. Yep. I just wanted to play I really liked, I li- I liked it. And, you know, new Doctor, finally. And, uh, you know, more importantly, new showrunner. Yeah, we got, we got the new show for about ninety seconds at the end of the episode. Yeah, yeah, but it's it's it now. Like, Moff, uh, you know, Moffat's done. I, I don't have to to worry anymore. I don't have to go. Oh, it's still got one more in it. Yeah, it keeps doing that. Yeah, in terms of what's coming up, uh, the Runaways finale is next week. Uh, so that's the thing. Also, Star Trek Discovery is back uh, this weekend. So, as in, you know, like this Sunday coming. Yeah. Oh, cool. I thought that was, yeah, maybe next Sunday, but okay, that's a nice surprise. Oh, I've got it noted down. Yeah, that sounds right. Yeah. Sunday the 7th, yeah. The 7th, yeah, yeah. Uh, I, for some reason, I just assumed it was later, but... you got me doubting myself now, but it's... No, under, no, it's, it's, I it's, think it's just, I don't, I don't expect anything back this early, as a rule. It's so on our it schedule me. for this weekend. If it ends up being the following week, I apologise, but it's on our schedule for this weekend, so... Uh, I expect it. And obviously S.H.I.E.L.D., which took one week off, literally one week off for Christmas, is uh, back this week as well. So uh, there's your updates in terms of things. Um, obviously, we got some premiere dates in the news for various things, um, and we got some premiere dates that we've added to the schedule over the, the last little while. But uh, So I think without, with, without further ado is what I'm trying to say. I'm butchering things already. You're not doing great at speaking today, to be honest. Okay, so starting off this week's news, uh, we have some quick things at the start, as that typically tends to be where I put them. Uh, renewals, cancellations, that kind of thing, premiere dates. So, renewals. First up, The Gifted has been renewed for season two at Fox. So, if there is going to be an effect of Disney and Fox still happening on the TV landscape, it's definitely not happening this season. In fact, uh, I heard... Um, the people who run Fox and FX basically saying, yeah, we're just kind of operating as if the thing won't even go through because we, we have to until things actually yeah, Until they changing. know otherwise, they yeah. just have to keep going. Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah, uh, and even the uh, the head of FX was even saying that he thinks that oh, there'll be almost no change probably because I think Disney want, like, they're, they're a fan of the, 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 the content we have, they don't have something like that, so they kind of just fit naturally into the overall system. Uh, you know, it'll be more the movies where I see no, that, conflicts. That, that does make sense yeah. for them, like, like for them to say that because Disney doesn't have that. So this is something that they want to have. Clearly, that's part of the acquisition. Yeah, we even said this, I think, when we first yeah. talked about all this. That FX is kind of like it fills a slot in Disney's overall programming that they don't even have. They don't even have a channel like FX that shows that kind of stuff. So, so yeah, they might tweak it a bit here or there, but generally speaking, I, I see no reason for them to do a major shakeup. So Gift is renewed for season two. Uh, Fox quite happy with it. We gave up after episode eight, although I did hear that people seem to be very happy with the the fina- finale and the, maybe the last couple of episodes and the villains they introduced. Uh, I'm not going to say I'm tempted to go back. Maybe if we hear season two is really good, I'll be maybe. Uh, the thing is, it, it kind of hits just slump that I'm like not excited even hearing that. I'm like, yeah. okay, you introduce some good stuff, but. That, that it doesn't ignore the problem still at, at that point. I agree. It's the sort of thing where maybe once you can just binge watch the rough patch and then get to the good stuff. If it if it isn't if it is indeed good from then on, yeah, you can kind of do that. Uh, you know, you, you don't just watch Parts and Rec season one once a week. No, no, you binge through that in a couple of hours and then get to season two and then enjoy it. <laughs> from I mean, there. even a show we love now, Agents of Shield. I had to do that with the first season. Well, also renewed uh, is Van Helsing over at Sci-Fi for season three. We tried the first couple episodes back when it started, but it was kind of a... There was potential there, uh, but timing was an issue. There was a lot of other shows on at that time, so we just kind of had to make the call and cut it after after episode three. Um, I've always been curious uh, as to, like, you know, how's it been since then? I'll be honest. The fact that I barely remember... I know I watched some, but I barely remember it so i'm not too curious 
No, it was a little bit. I liked it a little bit more than you did. I don't think it was amazing by any means, but I, like I thought there was a bit more potential there. Um, like I think it was better than say Killjoys or or like uh, Dark Matter when they started. Yeah, like I feel yeah. like there was a bit more potential uh, than, than uh, those shows. I, I really don't remember it that well though. Like, what yeah. what happened in it? <laughs> it was post apocalypse. There was vampires. She was the chosen one. Vanessa Helsing and. They're yeah, in, they're yeah, in like a hospital. Some bells. Is this the one where they treated the vampires like zombies? Kinda, yeah, kinda. Yeah, yeah, okay. <laughs> yeah, it's it's, it's kind of it, there in my brain it, somewhere. It, it got a season three. The season two finale is apparently about to just air. Uh, I thought it was worth mentioning. It's, even though we're not covering it, it seems like something that's in maybe our audience's wheelhouse. Sure. Yeah. Uh, uh, Netflix renewed She's Got to Have It for season two, which is surprising because I, I did not see kind reviews, but obviously. If it's getting watched and talked about, they don't really care about the reviews. So uh, that's well, the Spike Lee. Proves that. Yeah, that's, that's the Spike Lee show. The uh, the oh, based on his movie. Was... Yeah, yeah. That, that that was only a few months ago, Corey. You should probably remember that. Yeah, but the thing is, when it's something I know, I don't really care about. I don't, you know, I, I remember hearing about this. Now you've said that it's that. I I deleted that from my brain. That name because I'm like I don't need to know that anymore. Uh... And and I have never once seen it pop up in my Netflix. Oh, I have. I've definitely seen it. On Netflix. Oh, okay, fair. I, I, I really haven't. Yeah, I've definitely seen it. About uh, Netflix also renewed Dark for season two. Good, very good, very good. Yeah, we liked that a lot. Uh, very happy to get that news. This was soon after we recorded the last one. This news is a few weeks old, but damn it, I'll mention it because I'm happy. So, uh, Dark season two is a thing. That's happening. That's cool. Uh, check out our review of the first one if you want to see if it's worth watching. Uh, short version it is <laughs> but yeah, just watch it and then yeah. and then go listen to our stuff but uh, watch it. hulu has renewed runaways for season two again this just comes just before the finale because the finale is airing this coming week so that's good news um we've been enjoying the show yeah definitely it's it's so, been solid R- yeah. rough around the edges but solid R- rough around the edges but where it needs to work it works so yeah, uh, de- uh, definitely where okay a season two can really you know shape this into something properly good I think I'll say that I don't get super excited for it, but every time I sit down to watch it, it's like it's like a little comfort blanket. It's like, oh yeah, I, I like coming back to this show and the characters and like yeah, it's one the of those journey. shows that I forget about, but and then I watch it and go, oh yeah, I like this. It's it's good, uh, you know, every every week consistently. So that's the renewals. Uh, we have a cancellation. Uh, Dirk Gently's Holistic Detective Agency has been cancelled after season two by BBC America. So. That's gone, uh, unfortunately. Okay. For uh, yeah, like I heard a lot of people like that. Yeah, we never got around to it. Again, this was one that launched at a really busy time and we just could not fit it in. And uh, although now that it's been cancelled after two seasons, I'm like, well, now I don't feel so bad because now I don't have to have the pain of losing it <laughs> if I like Yeah, it. no, uh, that, that's true. So that's the thing. Uh, premiere dates. We have the premiere date for the season two of... Lemony Snicket's A Series of Unfortunate Events at Netflix. That is launching on the 30th of March on Netflix, obviously. Uh, Ten episodes this season, which we knew. We knew that the the second season was going to be two more because there's uh, uh, eight episodes in season one, which is four books. There's five books in season two, and then the last four books will be season three when that hits. So one of them had to have an extra pair of episodes. So it's going to be this season. Uh, so well, that's cool. Uh, yep. Nice time for it. Uh, Netflix have really got a few things spread out because Jessica Jones is earlier in March. There's a couple of things in February. Nice spread out content, seemingly, uh, so it, far. It seems reliably every two or three weeks we've got something from Netflix on the horizon up until you know at least that point, which is as far as we know right now. I'm sure April's going to get something. Oh, I'm month. sure it will. I'm, yeah. just, I'm assuming it will. I'm just saying you know, definitively we, you know, every two or three weeks up until then. Yeah. So there you go, and then some other dates. FX, of course, we mentioned the TCAs. FX had a bunch of stuff announced. Uh, some we cover here, some we don't. Well, two we don't. One that's a new show, and then one we do cover. Uh, Atlanta season two is hitting March first. Trust, which is the the Getty one, you know, the, the rich Getty family where the what guy's kidnapped and uh, none of no one I, in his family. I have vague recollection of this. Yes. Yeah. No one in his family actually wants to pay the ransom. I remember this. Yeah. We talked about this a lot last development yeah, season. Yeah, yeah. I, I remember it. We never watched it, though, did we? What do you mean, watch it? It's the first season coming up. Oh, is this, is this only just starting? Okay. <laughs> I thought, for some reason, I thought this is one that we, we decided not to watch at some point. No, no, no. This is the, this is the show just starting. I think, I think that's how long we've been talking about it. That I assumed we, we'd watched it at some point. And no, then, no. It was in, it was in development. We talked about it a yeah. lot, I think, last spring. Maybe get it this summer. Uh, so that's, that's launching on 25th of March. And then the final season of The Americans is launching on March 28th. So they've got a lot of March stuff launching. Uh, yeah. 
Americans uh, might be a very good show. I, I've seen a lot about the first season, but it's just kind of one we've missed the boat on because it's the last season coming up, which I think is sixth or seventh season. So sounds about right. Yeah. Yeah. So we we ain't catching up for that. But hey, who knows? Maybe a, an already cancelled down the line someday. We'll we'll work through it. Um, and then no specific date, but the one that's the most relevant to us is Legion, which is coming back in April for season two. We don't know the exact date, but they mentioned this at the TCAs, and they also mentioned that season two will have a, a one year time jump. Uh, and the only description we've got for the plot from Noah Hawley is that season one was an insane man in a sane world. Season two is a sane man in an insane world. So I'm expecting shenanigans. Yeah, sounds good. Uh, I mean, April's looking nice, thanks. We've got that and Handmaid's Tale. We do, we do. So yeah, April's yeah. shipping up. We do, we, we do, they're, they're recasting the, 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 the villain, right? In, in, in Legion. What, you mean... Well, it's kind of spoilers for season one, for say, is it? Yeah, I don't. That, 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 yeah, that, that's why I didn't say a name specifically. It mentioned her in the thing, though. No, 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 not her. The actual, you know. Oh, you mean like the actual big version? Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, sure. Well, that doesn't really matter that much. It's, it's mostly prosthetics. It is, but I'm, just wonder, <laughs> I'm wondering if yeah. it'll have an impact on presence. Oh, sure. I mean, when you said that, I was more worried about losing a certain actress. And oh, like, no, no. I'm like, no, no she's back. Right. I know she's back. Yeah, so Paul is, uh, you know, this guy, uh, they, they, he left, no one knows why at this point, or at least not officially anyway. He just vanished and into thin air. He, he left production halfway through filming and had to be replaced. All right, okay. Yeah. So are they reshooting the, the parts that you already shot? or uh, I, I believe so. I'd imagine so. It's a it's nicer cut if it happens between season rather than yeah, halfway exactly. through a season. Uh, okay, fair enough. Interesting. But speaking of Noah Hurley, though, uh, there was some, an update on Fargo uh, yeah. here as well. Uh, basically, the CEO of FX Networks, FX Networks <laughs> to say that a bit better, uh, said that Fargo is probably going to return in 2019. Noah Hawley's already talked to him about the idea. He's got the idea for season four. It's just a case of he's busy schedule, he's doing Legion. He's still technically working on a Doctor Doom movie, although I feel like that one's so early in development that if movies are going to be affected by this Disney deal, I feel like that's one that might get quickly cut <laughs> when things come out of place. I'll be honest, I forgot that was a thing. So yeah, just that, that'll get shafted. I feel like it probably will. I mean, maybe not. Maybe if, if it's far along in development by the time... Because, you know, like we say, it could be 18 months before Disney can actually actively start calling shots officially. Yeah. Although, I imagine that before then, because they're close with the owners and they want this to go through, they'll already be, like, sort of feeding them things they want them to yeah, do. Like, and, all right, give, give us a hand on these things, would you? Yeah. Get, get this set up for us by the time we're officially in control. I feel like that's yeah. something that'll be happening, so, so there's a more transition, but... Uh, this is cool obviously season 3 had its high points I think it was the weakest of the three seasons though and I was not very fond of the ending but I am excited though if, I mean, because if, this is the thing with Fargo is that each season is like a completely new thing yeah so there's no reason for it not to be potentially the best season exactly yeah it is kind of insane that I think season 2 of Fargo would have been very high in like, the top 10 had we done it that year and it would have been you know popping up in maybe best episode of the year and Fargo this year didn't pop up in anything for us no, it, it was considered in a few places for a few things here and there, but not yeah, not over the other stuff, not seriously enough. But hey, so so yeah, so Fargo was expected in 2019. So hey, you know what? I'm actually kind of cool if that ends up in like an, an every two years thing rather than once a year. Yeah, I'm glad it's kind of waited to the point where it's gone, no, no, he's got an idea for it and we're yeah. going from there, not do this, please. No, we, we need more. It's kind of, it's, it's come from the, the creative side first, at least. Yeah, so... So that's cool. That's it. I am more. I mean, obviously, it's much closer, but I am more excited for Legion season two than I am Fargo season four at this point. But that could just be because where, yeah. where, where, where we left off, Fargo was in the, its weakest place ever, and Legion left me off feeling very impressed. I'm like, oh, that was really good. That's like, the thing. I, I think I preferred Fargo season two over Legion season one. Oh, but... I can I can see that. I can see that. I'd probably so, say I think I prefer Legion season one over Fargo season one though. Yeah, I agree with that. If I'm ranking things here, which is a weird thing to rag, but Fargo Season 2, Legion Season 1, Fargo Season 1, Fargo Season 3. Yeah, I agree with all that. The, the Noah Hawley television Seasons universe. list. <laughs> yeah, because, I mean, it wouldn't be the new year without a list from you, would it? Oh, 
uh, I don't know what to call it. Noah's Ark. Oh, it's all the shows on his ship. That's atrocious, but I'll allow it. It's, it, it, it can pass. Say if you were called Noah, how tempting would it be to open like a a club or a, or a restaurant called The Ark? And not put your name in the title, but when they come in and say, oh, you're the owner. It's like, oh, I'm the owner, yeah, and shake shake people's hands. You, you know that thing when you go around the restaurant and like, just sort of you know make sure everyone's yeah, having yeah. a good time. And like, uh, oh, what's your name? Oh, my name's Noah. And you just have that moment where their face gets it. Oh, you you know someone's done that already. But they, just, they get why it's called The Ark after, after they've said that. You, you know someone's done it. Hmm. I know. That's just things that go through my head, people. Uh, so, more potential, or more, more premiere dates, actually. That one was more of a potential return. Uh, this is back to sort of concrete information. HBO has set a February 11th premiere date for Here and Now. This is the new show from Alan Ball, of course. He famously did Six Feet Under, which is a very well-respected show, and he also did the less-respected show, um, True Blood. So... I saw enough of True Blood that I quit it, <laughs> so I have an I opinion saw the on first that. Two seasons. It was about that what I saw, but but, it was, but it, was, it was okay. I didn't hate it. I think I saw like maybe the first one or two episodes of season three, and I'm like, yeah, I'm done. Like I'm just out of this. I don't. I don't think I started season three. I, don't, I just. I just never came back. Yeah. Even, even though I didn't dislike, I just didn't come back. Uh, Six Feet Under. I've seen like a couple of episodes of. It seemed very good. It's got a lot of praise. People talk about it having one of the best finales of any TV show. It's something for us to put on the to watch list. Absolutely. Uh, but it's just interesting that that's these kind of legacies. These these two shows that have got very different reputations. But it has a new show. It's called Here and Now. And we've heard about this before, but I'll tell you that I'll remind you of the description because you the chances Please. of you remembering this is, are next to nothing. So it stars Tim Robbins and Holly Hunter. So you got you got, a, got a noble cast. Here and Now is described as a provocative and darkly comic meditation on the disparate forces polarising present-day American culture as experienced by the members of a progressive multi-ethnic family. A philosophy professor and his wife, their adopted children from Vietnam, Liberia and Colombia and their sole biological child. And a contemporary Muslim family, sorry, Muslim family, I said that weird, uh, headed by a psychiatrist who is treating one of their children. Uh... I'll follow that last part of that sentence. I feel like there was a lot of running on there. Yeah, towards yeah. The end, but... it, it, it could have been worded better. Yeah. Uh... Okay. <laughs> I, it, it's, it's weird because it's like, okay, you're telling me who the show's about. I don't know what the show's about. That's why I, Not I, I, really. I'm feeling like it's going to be... Because Six Feet Under was kind of like that. I mean, it started with the dad dying. That was kind of like the, the, the genesis yeah. of the family coming together to run this, this funeral home. But... I I wonder like if it's just going to be like a character, you know, kind of like the deuce, where it's just like, it's about the characters and there's yeah. not a whole lot of plot, which means it could end up being very good. Who knows? Uh, it's a ten episode first season, uh, Sundays uh, February eleventh. So we'll probably give this a try. I imagine we'll try a pilot and see how it is. Yeah, probably, yeah. Because uh, it's the sort of thing where it's not the, the a premise that leaps out to us, but Sunday night I, HBO. The same thing, I don't know enough about it to say I don't want to watch it yeah. because I really don't know what it is. I'm going to try it, though, and see what it is. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, there's enough people attached that, okay, there, there's probably some quality. Yeah, you, can, you can't fault Tim Robbins uh, being something. Uh, exactly. Andy Dufresne, uh, out of prison. That's what he did later in life. He, he was on that beach for a while, and then he, then he met Holly Hunter and started a family. Isn't that what everyone does? You know what I really want in life, actually? I really want, like, a... You know how every so often you get one of these like action movies where it's like the geriatrics who are old. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah. I want I want him and Morgan Freeman in a buddy cop action movie where they're both like near retirement. That sounds fun. I want it. <laughs> anyway, next up, second to HBO, they officially confirmed that Game of Thrones season eight, the final season, will not be back until twenty nineteen. Uh, no specific time period or date, but they they officially said it. So. Yeah, I'm not. I'm not surprised. A lot of people are really annoyed, and but I'm kind of. I think we're used to this at least now. You know, this X amount of months rather than okay, it'll be the same time next year. Oh yeah, we certainly are. It's funny though because I I've been I, I started a new thing for 2018 where and this was kind of Connor's fault where I started a TV database. Me. You started it first, and it it made me want to do it. Yeah, but I don't do it to the same extent that you do. I just do what I watch, not everything I've ever watched. Oh yeah, I'm backdating it, baby. Everything in there, everything. So I've been working my way through my backlog of everything I've watched, 
based on what I can I can recollect, and I I do have a rough record of just like shows that I've watched, so it's kind of easy to do. But I did watch the first season or so of Game of Thrones. I watched the first couple of episodes of season two, and you know, season two hit exactly a year after the first one. It, it was both both in April, like really yeah. close together, and I think it kept that consistency for maybe four right seasons until the, the last couple of seasons. I think. Yeah. So. I think it's interesting that that was doing fine with that, and it was doing that with more episodes as well, because it was having ten episodes a season those seasons. Yeah, yeah. And well, admittedly, these episodes are longer, though. They've kind of unof- not officially said that on, on like these, you know, press conference releases. Okay, sure, but you've got six episodes in this final season. If they're all half an hour longer, then it's still just the same as ten episodes. Oh, it is the same. Yeah, <laughs> so. I, I think it's a case of the the way cable production has kind of shifted. Yeah. They're not rushing to meet these things like, like they used to. You know, they used to be, Which, oh, no, to be every fair, year on the dot. You know what? Let it cook. I mean, I don't care about Game of Thrones, but just in general, let the show cook and give it to uh, me when it's ready. It's, it's always frustrating with any individual show, but now that everything's doing it, it has less impact because yeah, c- yeah, everything I'm, kind of rolls on. Now I'm not thinking about it in terms of, oh, how long has it been since last season? Now I'm just thinking about it in the sense of, do I have a couple of good cable shows at a time to watch? Right, but because they're all knocking on, it kind of they're, they're all rolling together pretty much. So it's still this, it's, it's a longer gap between each individual show, but you've still always got something. That's basically what I just said in a more succinct way. Yeah, yeah, but I, I'm, I screw you. <laughs> <laughs> I, I lost words. Clearly, I'm tired. Uh, next up, Prison Break is a thing that might be coming back still? in a new iteration. Yeah, already had its revival season. Uh, and the exact quote from the TCA is here was, we are developing a new iteration of Prison Break. Uh, and the reason why I'm quoting that directly is like, is that a reboot? Is that like bringing the characters back? Or is that like what's going on? Because it sounds new like... iteration implies it would be a reboot to me. It does. But... However, and then, then he says, um, I fully expect both brothers to be involved in the series, uh, meaning the two characters uh, yeah, yeah. That, that the show revolves around. Assuming they're all available. So that sounds like he wants them back, but he's not like attached to it. <laughs> it feels like, okay, it'll be that that world still, and they'll be involved, but they won't be the leads, because they can't bank on them. Hmm, potentially, yeah. So, you know, re- revival, uh, the revival era of TV is uh, in full swing. Yeah, we'll get, we'll get speaking more... of, X-Files you know, returned this, this past week, and its ratings were crazy bad compared to the the last season, apparently. I'm not surprised after that last cliffhanger. No. And also, I remember when that season was coming, what was that, 10? Yeah, so 11, yeah. I think. There's yeah. there. When 10 was coming back, I was seeing marketing for it everywhere. This time, I didn't even know it aired until I was seeing these things telling me that the ratings were really bad. Yeah, no, the, the buzz just isn't there this time. That's the thing, this works if they actually build it up enough, but clearly, yeah. they, they, they haven't... And I think it's because I wonder if it's because they noticed the last one. But even then, like, pimp it out as the last one. Say, hey, it's the end make of the. Make more of a big deal about yeah. it. Going, hey, look, we're finally giving you an ending. It's the end of the journey. It's weird. Uh, I'm not sure what the what the thinking is there. All right, uh, on to some castings. Uh, so Stephen Dorff has been added to the cast of True Detective season three. Uh, if you don't know him, he was the bad guy in the first Blade movie. I think it's the first thing that pops it in my head about Stephen Dorff. But you know, he pops up. Uh, from here or there, and bit I'm sure roles. I'll know his face. He, pr- he probably will. Uh, season season three, Dorf will play Roland West, an Arkansas state investigator who, along with his partner, has his life and career influenced over three decades by a baffling crime. So that sounds like he'll at least be in a couple of the decades, maybe with like an older actor for the newest time period. Yeah. But I could see him maybe playing the middle aged and then having him being kind of a younger, you know, just pretending he's younger for the, the earlier one. Because <laughs> I can buy 10 years without changing the actor's appearance. Oh, yeah. yeah. Well, well, about makeup. Yeah. I, I think it depends on the ages, but I, I think, like, you know, 25 to 35, there's not a huge difference. Yeah. There's a bit it, of a it, difference, but it's not huge. Yeah, you get away with 25 to 35. 35 to 45. Yeah. But always the 25 um, to 45, you're like, no, 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 I'd see a difference there, but you can buy the. The yeah, yeah, the gaps. ten year intervals. But if it's like you know, fifteen to twenty five, uh, no. Oh, obviously, because puberty's like. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Pu- puberty it's changes thing. things. Uh, you know, especially since you get guys who look the same age from about thirty to sixty. That, yeah. That's the that's the one plus of looking older earlier is that you look the same age for a long, long time. <laughs> yeah. It's a gamble, isn't it? It's like, oh, am I going to get any older still looking? 
I mean, Morgan Freeman has looked about 60 for about 30 years. Um, yeah. Patrick Stewart springs to mind. Pat, yeah, Patrick Stewart. I mean, I don't know what age he was when he was doing Next Gen, but he's looked pretty much the same age most of that time. He's only just recently started to look a bit oldie. Yeah, in the crackly. last like three or four years, though. Like, yeah. Very recently. Very recently. But for he a went long a good time. 20, 30 years unchanged. Yeah. He, he, you know, he was in like, X Men movies not that long ago where he still looked kind of the same for the, so, most the part. same as the first X-Men movies yeah uh, so no that's the thing uh, so yeah so Stephen Dorff uh, in True Detective season 3 so it's just sort of remind you that's ticking along that's the thing that's happening uh, bigger casting news and this just broke this was breaking news I got this just before we went, we went on to record oh I might not have seen this then uh, we have our Sabrina oh yeah you probably wouldn't recognise the name admittedly uh, Kiernan Sheepka has been cast as Sabrina uh, I actually I recognised her face, so I, I, I googled her, to see see what okay. she'd been in. Um, apparently she was in Mad Men. Uh, I presume when she was a bit younger, she was maybe play, playing the kid or something like that. But uh, I actually knew her face from something else. She was in a horror movie last year uh, called The Black Coat's Daughter, aka February, depending on uh, which country you're getting in. Um, but she was in that with um, what do you call her from Scream Queens? Emma Roberts. Which one? Okay. Uh, she she was in that with her, uh, and she was pretty good in that. And I was like, oh, okay, that's cool. Um, definitely, they're screening for an actual teenager, from yeah, the looks yeah. of her, uh, which is nice. But uh, I'm yeah. seeing that more and more often, actually. Yeah, they're giving up this whole 25 year olds pretending to be teens thing. They're going, yeah, you know, maybe people aren't buying this shit anymore. Do you know what I think? Do you know what I think it partly is? Do you know how we're kind of shying away from the whole, oh, the teenager has a relationship with the the older person kind of thing. We're trying yeah. to not promote that to teenagers. I think part of getting away from that is saying, hey, let's have actual look, teenage look, looking people in those roles and it'll feel natural not to have that. Because it won't be creepy anymore. Like, you, you couldn't do it before because it would just look creepy. Exactly, yeah. Because I was, I, yeah, cause it, it yeah. would look creepy with the older person. That Whereas now if we're shying away from that, if it happens, it will look creepy, and that's okay because it's meant to be creepy. Like there's actually yeah, yeah. a point. The thing is, creepy. before it's like we know it's supposed to be creepy, but they're both looking like they both look the same age anyway, so it's not really to watch. Yeah. Or Whereas, at the very least, one looks twenty-five and one looks thirty-five. In which case, who cares? <laughs> yeah, exactly. It's still not creepy, is it? Yeah. Uh, so I think maybe that's part of the part of the reason for it. But no, I, I think from what I saw in that movie, she's uh, she's good cast. Uh, Especially since they're going down this darker, more we're you know, we're actually doing horror stuff with the the story show. Yeah, so you got someone who's you know been involved in that side of the of, of movies. So no, I, I'm down from from the limited amount of I've seen. I'm I'm down. So I've I've seen nothing, so I'll have to take your word. Now. I'm happy this is going along. I'm I'm a little bit hopeful that we might get the first season before the end of the year. With the casting, it's possible because sometimes with these things they'll announce the cast when they're already about to start shooting because they've already known for weeks who's cast but they don't announce it until yeah yeah and this is this is netflix right this is netflix yeah i can see them pumping this out at halloween halloween it's a 10 episode season as well so it's not like they're shooting a silly it's not, amount it's not impossible uh I, I could see it hitting this year because they because they, they ordered it for two seasons so you'd think they'd yeah. want to get to the first one quick yeah and, and like they, if they get this for Halloween, I think they they, they get a, a nice boost from that. They capitalise, yeah. If they get that around that Halloween well, season, they, well, they're not they're not having Stranger Things for Halloween this year. Oh, obviously not. <laughs> so gotta have something. Christmas so at not, best for Stranger Sabrina? Things. Yeah, at yeah. best, if, if if this year at all. So uh, hey, uh, all right. So next up, uh, so we're into new shows and green lights uh, now. Starting with the comedies, as we typically do. Uh, so that's this happened soon after the last time we did news. Because as I was looking for stuff, I got to this and went, "Oh yeah, this was a thing weeks ago <laughs> that I'd forgotten about." NBC wants to bring back The Office. Oh yeah, that. Yeah. I, uh, I was wondering what you're talking about here. So I'm like, I must have seen if it's this old, but I don't have any idea what you're talking about. Yeah. So Steve Carell will have nothing to do with it. They know that much. Uh, and NBC aren't officially talking about this. This this is the the, the news places that have kind of dug in and they've, they've discovered yeah. this and they've gotten the information out. Now, here's the thing: they don't actually know if it's going to be a reboot and if they want the rest of the cast back or if it's going to be just a complete new refresh with new people. Now, here's the thing: given that it would be ridiculous for lots of those characters to still be at that job now, and given that a lot of them left the job at the end of the show, at least some of the main characters did. Yeah, that's that. It would be so silly trying to like tie them all back together again. I feel like the only way to do it. I mean, I don't think they should do it at all, 
but the only way to do it is to just start from scratch again and have like a new boss who's like crazy and go from there yeah which sounds like a bad idea but i mean they did it they, they, i mean that in it the, the, this version in itself that we're, we're talking about you know, the office the us version is is that to the uk version anyway so yeah. so it can be done admittedly i, I don't know like, I, 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 what 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 will make it different cuz i mean that that first season especially that very first episode of of the office was literally just remaking the uk version like shot for shot and it yeah, was awful and it was terrible and then it got a little bit better throughout the first season and then when season two hit it was like oh no this is actually because they're doing their own thing now they've made yeah. it their own it, and it was good for like a good four seasons five seasons maybe and then it started to nosedive pretty considerably yeah, and, then, yeah, yeah. and then when michael scott left it was like really bad for a while i mean season eight of the office is one of the worst seasons of a comedy i've ever watched i despise that season with every fiber of my being it was awful. Everything with Gabe, everything with the... And I, I love uh, Spader, uh, yeah. Jim Spader, who was uh, the, uh, the the new the boss, boss for the season. Yeah. Uh, but he just didn't work on the show. They were trying to do this thing where he yeah, was always... Yeah, but he wasn't as bad as Will Ferrell. No, he was awful, but he was only there for like four episodes, so yeah. <laughs> I, can, I can get over that. And they tried to make Andy the boss... Everything they did, and this is the thing, it got good again for the last few episodes, because, and this is what I'd been saying the entire time it was bad, is they kept dragging things out so they couldn't actually develop anyone anymore, they just had to keep repeating the status quo, yeah. and because of that, nothing could happen, and when finally they started to sort of gear up for the end, and so people were starting to leave and, and move on, it was like, oh, things are actually happening again, so it actually started being good. And the finale yeah. was actually pretty decent, but most yeah. of season 9 was rough, all of season 8 was terrible, Season 7 post... Hit or, hit or miss, I think, for 7. Yeah, so 7 before he left, because, the, the, again, they'd been stalling with him for a little while, and that was quite bad, sort of late Season 6, early Season 7. But once it became clear he was making the choice to move on, it was like, oh, they're actually doing something with him, so it was, it was good for a little yeah, bit. Yeah, yeah. And his exit and was I think fine. The, the, the immediate aftermath was still pretty good, of dealing with the, the, the emptiness of that. I don't know, Will Fer Ferrell was immediately after him. I think they had, a, yeah, yeah, but his aside from his actual stuff, which was bad, the, everyone mm. else I thought was pretty good in in that point. It was just just more feral stuff I didn't like. I don't remember well enough to, no, nah, fair enough to dispute that or agree with yeah. that or whatever. But uh, but but the, the original point here is while I'm, <sighs> initially I'm like, ugh, again, what, why? If they can make it their own in the same way that you know this yeah. person did. Here, here's the thing. If it's just a workplace comedy with a bunch of new characters who have never met and they, they have fun with it, it could be fun. But at that point, I'm like, just call it something else. <laughs> like, you know, yeah. it doesn't have to be Dunder Mifflin. You know, make it a plastic company. <laughs> and, oh, know, yeah, you know, super different. You know, you know what I mean, though? No, like, they, they just want the name. That's all this is, is they, they, they want they the do name. They just want the name. And I, I, I'm annoyed at them for wanting the name, but I understand it, so... I don't know. I'm kind of indifferent until I see something, <laughs> or at least hear like what they're actually planning to do with it. You know what? Don't don't try and don't ruin more Jim and Pam. Like leave them as they are. Oh, leave them. Do not touch them. They were the heart of the show, and they, they already messed with it a little bit towards the end. Mm. That you know we didn't like. So, um, all right. That's but speaking of revivals, though, especially uh, well, of course we've got another one. This is not NBC developing this. It originally aired on NBC, but it won't necessarily go back there, uh, this revival. So, Mad About You. I don't know if you ever ever saw that show. I didn't. In the 90s. Uh, Helen Hunt and Paul Reiser, who we recently saw in Stranger Things. Um, I did watch this, actually. I saw quite a bit of this uh, back, in the, yeah. back in the day. I, I, I'm familiar with it, but I never watched it. Uh, it was a decent sitcom. I've not seen it uh, in any recent times, but I remember it being enjoyable enough at the time, and uh, it had the crossovers with friends because, uh, what's her face, uh, Phoebe. Yeah. What's her name? Phoebe. No, I mean, uh, Lisa Kudrow. Oh, Lisa Kudrow. Yeah. yeah. Sorry, I thought you were talking about cross. You were talking about crossovers. So I assume you're on about the characters. Well, yeah, but she she was already on that show playing a waitress who turned out to be her twin sister on Friends. They connected them up and said that was her twin yeah. sister. Uh, Ursula was the, the, the yes. twin sister, I think. Uh, so they, they had some fun crossovers there, and they also connected to Seinfeld. Like, all three episodes had a blackout one night, so each episode was all in a blackout. Like, this is the city of Lost Park. Funnily enough, I've been re watching Friends recently. Yeah. Just, you know, just stick it on in the background when you're having dinner. And uh, just did that blackout episode. It's yeah. quite early on. So that was a fun thing where all three episodes in the same night all had that 
yeah. happen. Yeah. Uh, so there's some fun things there. I, I think Ursula popped up in Seinfeld for an episode as well at one point. Uh, so they had fun with it. But um, that was a, it was a fun show. I, 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 I don't remember anything super plot-wise about it. I just remember generally liking the characters and been into it. It was a simple enough show. Uh, but they're actually in talks to bring back Helen Hunt and Paul Reiser. They want to actually bring them back because part of the, the plot of the show was that at the end of the show, they, they finally had a kid. And they're thinking now this will be a show about how the kid's just leaving for college because it's actually been that, that amount of time, <laughs> which is kind of insane. And it's what do we do now? Making us feel old. So it's, it's kind of the empty nest sort yeah, of syndrome. Okay. That's kind of what they're, they're going for. What's interesting is that the final episode, I do remember the finale, it actually had the daughter from the future talking about her parents and how they cared about each other. It was kind of this weird epilogue episode. And I'm just kind of thinking that now they're going to have to actually cast the daughter, but they can't cast her now because she's like, she'll be like 40. Yeah, <laughs> compared yeah. to the actress. So I just think that's kind of funny. But uh, it's an okay idea. Like I feel like for bringing things back, uh, especially a show that was just about the characters, really, it kind of makes sense. Because it wasn't like they split up or they went into a new... It's not like The Office where... They've all left the office, so the main characters have left the office. It's weird to bring it back. I said, no, they were a married couple who were still together at the end of the show, so... There's no reason why not. Yeah, it, may, it makes yeah. enough sense. Um, like I say, obviously it depends on comedy, but apparently uh, they'll try to get the actors back. Uh, Paul Reiser actually co-created it, uh, the, the original series. So, yeah, so the daughter Mabel, Mabel goes off to college, and that's kind of the, 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 the spurring on of, like, okay, what do we do now as old people? Uh, okay. I could, Not I could see opposed working. to it, oh, yeah, but I, ne- I never watched it, so I don't really have any attachment either. Uh, it ran from 92 to 99, uh, over six seasons, uh, and won various awards. Uh, and there's no word if uh, NBC will be involved yet, but it's, it's Sony Television who actually produced the show who are bringing it back. But it may go to NBC, they may want to it back. Might, yeah, they're, 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 they need some new comedies, right? Yeah, and they're in the, the revival business as, as of late with Bowling Green. Well, everyone is, to be fair. Yeah. Uh, to an extent, I feel I feel like there's a couple of the networks that are really doing it with sitcoms. Oh yeah, yeah, okay, I'll agree with that. Uh, and NBC are kind of up there, uh, and uh, they even try to do it with uh, the monsters again, like all these things. Yeah, yeah, because names sell. Okay, sticking with comedies, uh, we got Bell Heights at Fox, which is a single camera comedy. Eva Longoria is producing. She's producing a lot of shows. There's two dramas this week as well that she's producing, and we've heard her name pop up a few times yeah, over the last yeah, few months. Uh, but yeah, it's Bill Heights. It's uh, it follows an East Side LA family with three very different adult siblings who are all held together by the baby, who is a dutiful son. Uh, not a lot to go on, to be honest. Oh, it's a family comedy. Uh, it was apparently at ABC last season uh, and didn't go anywhere. So now she's mm. trying at Fox. Why not? Sure, C- could be okay. Could be awful. If you feel at one network, try it the others. Yeah, well, especially when it comes to the the comedies, they all like the same pretty much. <laughs> Or, or at least in my experience, a lot of network comedies are just network comedies. A lot of them aren't distinct between networks. Uh, to an extent... Actually, no, I'm going to disagree with that. I feel like you can pick out the ABC, the CBS, the NBC, and the Fox sitcoms apart. I think you can. Okay. I think Fox ones tend to be a bit edgier. And, you know, think, think of the Mick, or, or think of classic stuff like Married with Children. Uh, whereas if you go to CBS, it's your laugh tracks, your multi-camera. Uh, NBC is your... Typically the better ones, although Fox does have some good ones here or there. And ABC, I think, typically have more stylized sitcoms. I'm thinking of, you know, uh, oh god, what was the one with the kid in the wheelchair from last year? Oh, um, Speechless. Speechless, thank you. Uh, something more stylized or bubbly, I think, of ABC. I feel like you can. I feel like you can actually look at them all and say, that's kind of what their sitcoms feel like, generally. Okay. Not all of us, I, I think, but generally. I think, the, I, I think especially when you, you say, oh, CBS, Laugh Track, and More Camera, I, I guess now they're the only ones doing that, but for a long time, that was a lot of them. Okay, sure, that's not the only factors at play, though. I'm thinking, even like Married with Children on Fox, which was multi-camera, it was still edgy compared to yeah, CBS. Right, sure. Fair enough. So, no, I'll disagree. I, I, think all, I think those four you can easily look at and say... CW is not really in the fight because they don't really do comedies, but no, no, they don't. So, yeah, no, it's a yeah. I think I think you can. Anyway, uh, so moving on, we have a comedy uh, from Amazon coming from the Office creator Greg Daniels. Uh, it's called Upload, and we've got a cast member Robbie Amell has been cast in it. Okay. 
Upload is set in the future where humans are able to upload themselves into their preferred choice of afterlife. When Nathan, played by Amel, meets his early death, he is greeted by Nora in his version of Heaven. The series follows the two as Nathan grows accustomed to the life the way away from his loved ones, and the alive Nora struggles to stay afloat working her job alongside Nathan in the afterlife. Okay. So at okay. first you're thinking San Junipero, but it's got this weird thing where he's dead, but she is like someone who works like and goes in and helps the dead people, but she's actually in yeah the real world as well. Yeah, uh, it got a little bit murkier. I uh, you know need to, to define it a bit more for me. Okay. Yeah, so it's definitely a high concept comedy as far as comedies go. It, it is. It is. So, Which is some sometimes can be a, a problem against them. Sometimes it can be. Um, but yeah, you know, that's something different from Amazon. It's definitely something I'll, I'd be up for checking yeah, out. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Uh, sticking with comedy, still HBO's picked up a comedy called Him or Her uh, from Isa Ray, uh, who's behind Insecure. If you're familiar with that show, I'm not really, but they said that on the I, article. I, I've, I've heard of it. Yeah. But... So I thought I'd mention it. Uh, the single camera half hour comedy uh, chronicles the dating life of a bisexual black man and the distinctly different worlds and relationships he finds himself in. Not a lot there, uh, beyond who the character is, but... Yeah, could be, could be good. Could... Uh, again, it really comes down to quality on the, a lot of these you know, really vague... Comments. I mean, HBO, I expect more of an actual uh, filmmaking style, I guess. I don't expect a sitcom. I expect more. It's a half-hour show where, yeah, it just happens to be comedic. Yeah, I, I kind of, I see that being, being more that. Yeah, that no, speed. that's true. All right. Speaking of things coming back once again, the last comedy, if you will, on the list. Oh, it's, an, it's a cartoon. It's an animated show. I know where you go with this already. Oh, do you? So, okay, sorry. Yeah, yeah. I've seen this. Sorry. All right, Animaniacs has uh, been picked up for two seasons at Hulu, <laughs> so that's coming back. Uh, Hulu's yeah. also getting a bunch of the old stuff to stream rights, obviously, which goes hand in hand. Uh, Animaniacs made its debut in 1993, ran for five seasons. It followed the Warner Brothers, Yakko and Wacko, and the Warner sister Dot. Uh, and as they put it in the, the description, uh, they have been locked away in the Warner Brothers water tower for a very long time, but they have found a way to escape. I'm down. I, uh... Yeah, I, do you know what's funny? I, I did see it when I was a kid. I don't think I watched a lot of it, though. Yeah, I'm the same. I never watched it religiously, but yeah, I remember seeing it here and there. I like the idea, but I don't think I ever really get a chance to watch a lot of it, though. Maybe, maybe, you know, I, don't, I don't know if I'll ever actually make the time to sit down and watch, watch you it. You probably won't, let's be honest. Yeah, but it, like, yeah, I like the idea of it. I'm okay with it coming back. Why not? Yeah, definitely. It's a cartoon. It's not, it's not like the characters have to age, so... <laughs> Uh, exactly, they're, they're the same age day in day out, so it's fine. I'm sure people who are big fans of it though, growing up, uh, will be really happy about this. Yeah, yeah I imagine so. Makes sense. All right, dramas. We're on to the the meat. So we'll start with uh, sci-fi because they officially greenlit a show we've been hearing about a couple of times. This is Night Flyers. This is the George R R Martin book that's uh, been been turned into this show. Uh, I'll give you a, a reminder of what it is. The story follows eight maverick scientists and a powerful telepath who embark on an expedition to the edge of our solar system in the hopes of contacting alien life. They travel aboard the Night Flyer, a ship with a small, tight-knit crew and a reclusive captain. But when terrifying and violent events begin to take place, they start to question each other and surviving the journey proves harder than anyone thought. I'm so down. Obviously, I'm not a big yeah, Game of Thrones great. fan. But this is the, 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 this plot description is right up my alley. I'm I'm pumped for this. Oh yeah. Again, I can see this hitting before the end of the year potentially. Because this is the thing: we're so early. It's the first week of the year that stuff that's being greenlit, especially in cable, I can see hitting before the end of the year. It depends. It depends how premium they take them, doesn't it? Because obviously now we're we're going these you know thirteen, fourteen, fifteen month development cycles rather than just the 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 year that we were having before. Hey, I'm not saying for definite. I'm saying I can see it happen. It's possible that we could get these, you know, November-ish. It's possible. That's all I'm saying. Because this is the thing. They don't have to announce this when they actually make the choice. That, 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 this... No, no, this could be you know, well underway for all we know. Well, they attach a complete cast list to this announcement. Okay. So I'll just give you them quickly in case you know any of them. I didn't. I, there, was, there was one name that I vaguely recognised, and I looked it up. He's in the he's in the Insidious movies, which is where I knew the name from. Uh, but you got Gretchen Maul uh, as Doctor Agatha Matheson. You got 
Aeon Mackin as Carl D. Brannan. You got David Ajala as Roy Eris. You got Sam Strike as Thale. Is he an alien? Thale sounds like an alien to me. <laughs> you got Maya Eshet as uh, Lomi. You got Angus Sampson as Rowan. You got Jodie Turner Smith as Melantha Drill. Drill. Oh, I don't know how to say that. Oh, I'm, I'm curious to see how they pronounce that in the show. Uh, and Brian F. O'Byrne as Augie. No, I didn't know any of them. No, but it's a, it's a complete list, though. They've cast the whole show, which maybe implies that they are actually a little bit further along than maybe... Yeah, quite possibly. Maybe you'd suspect. Uh, but that's cool. No, I'm down for it. I'm down to try this. Uh, I always... I mean, obviously, I've got The Expanse, so I'm not completely devoid of spaceship shows, but I can always do with some more. Yeah, you never have too many of those, can you? I suppose Star Trek as well, Discovery, but still. Like, oh, yeah, that exists. <laughs> more shows in space. I'm for it. I'm for it all. Yeah, space is cool. So I'm glad that's a thing. Uh, I imagine it'll be about 10 episodes. I didn't mention it specifically, but it sounds like 10 no, no reason to assume otherwise. So, uh, back to HBO. We're back to uh, Issa Rae, because she's got both a drama and a comedy set up. The drama is called Sweet Life. Very short description. Sweet Life is a coming-of-age tale of the well-heeled teens growing up in the LA neighbourhood. Okay. Not a lot I mean, to go on there. <laughs> yeah. Uh, could be good. Coming, coming of age story. Yeah, I'm I like coming that. of age stories, but uh, you know, I, like I know good you ones. do. We did our top fifty movies of the two thousands last week, and Connor was like, "Coming of age, this coming of age, that." There was like four. I don't know. I'm, 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 uh, that was a, just a, a guess. I, I don't know how many there actually was. There might have been more. Might have been less. Four seemed reasonable. Every time you brought one up, though, you were like, "Oh, you know, I like coming of age stories." So here's this one. Well, I do. When it was good. It, it was a defining feature of the list. Is all I'm saying. I don't think it was the defining feature of the list. The defining feature of the list was you being wrong about my top few. Nah. All right. Uh, so next thing, uh, Apple of uh, or oh, sorry, another order. They're developing a new original drama that's called "Are You Sleeping?" Uh, that'll star Octavia Spencer. So it's got some talent attached, which is cool. Um. It's actually being produced by Reese Wellspin's company, Hello Sunshine, which is also producing the show that they picked up from, you know, with her and Jennifer Aniston and the, 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 yeah. the morning talk show one. Uh, so her company's getting in bed with Apple because this is this is the second show. Well, that's because with Apple have a shit ton of money. So <laughs> they, they they do indeed. Uh, the series is based on Kathleen Barber's novel of the same name, which gives a glimpse into the obsession uh, with true. Ki- no, sorry, gives a glimpse into the obsession with true crime podcasts. Why can't I speak tonight? Uh, and it challenges its viewer to consider the consequences when the pursuit of justice is placed on the public stage. Uh, Sarah uh, Koenig, uh, the creator of the uh, Serial podcast, which is quite popular, uh, is going to consult for it. So she's going to be involved in some capacity. Uh, so that's an interesting premise. It is. I'm not. I'm. I'm not entirely sure how it's going to function as a TV show. Uh, I think it'll be a drama. Like it says it's a drama, but I, I think yeah, it'll yeah. be a drama. It just it'll be all these themes of this. I feel like maybe there'll be a crime to be solved, but there'll be like a thing publicly that interferes with it or something sure. like that. Yeah. But uh, that's interesting. Uh, maybe you could look up the book and see see if uh, I probably could. But see what the premise of the book I'm is. Maybe that'll give us something to. more concrete. Uh, it's called "Are You Sleeping?" That's the title of that one. Uh, but no, I'm I'm, I'm somewhat interested. Uh, I'm not as interested as their. Uh, was it uh, the anthology one with Spielberg attached? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Amazing that, Stories, that, I think it was called. Yeah, that, that would sound pretty good, with uh, Fuller as well. Yeah. Uh, I'm not so keen on the Fuller aspect, yeah. but... Yeah, speak for yourself. Uh, I, I find Fuller, I don't know, something about, about his stuff that typically just doesn't land with me. You know what's funny? I think every time you describe Fuller, it sounds like you go, he's just pretentious, almost, in his, in his filmmaking. But it's not. I, I like that type of filmmaking. It's no, just... no, no. But it's it's like that that he's trying to be pretentious, but he's not quite getting it for you. I guess. <laughs> I mean, uh, I don't necessarily uh, feel that strongly when I'm watching it. Of, of that, I just kind of it just doesn't land. I'm just kind of yeah. watching it, being like, okay, this is yeah, pretty Hannibal scenes, yeah, sure, but I don't care. <laughs> you know, one day I'll probably finish Hannibal. <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, season three's a slog. I'm not gonna lie. That's, that's where I stopped. I got about three episodes in and went. Oh yeah, god, okay. that first half of season three. Oh, and it was very reminiscent of Hannibal the movie, and I hate Hannibal the movie. George Reynolds, I really love season one or two, like more than you like it. Oh, you do. Yeah, absolutely. You do. 
I, I mean, I think it's okay. I, I don't really, hate. I don't hate season one or two of Hannibal. I just, I, I don't love them the way everyone else does. I do, but I, I couldn't watch three. Very disappointing. Hey. You know, everyone's always upset about Pushing Daisies being cancelled. I, I watched the pilot and was like, nah, I'm good. I'm oh, I love Pushing Daisies. Nah, I didn't, I didn't get it. <laughs> it wasn't I, for me. I, I, I'm, I'm sad that we didn't get any more of that. Yeah, no, better off in the dark. No, 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 no need to waste uh, NBC's money? Whoever was making it, I can't remember. Well, I can't really remember either. ABC. NBC sounds about right, but... I think AB, it feels more like an ABC show, actually, now I'm thinking about it, but Maybe. it doesn't matter. Anyway, uh, so next up, Amazon and ITV have uh, partnered up. They have greenlit a show called The Widow, which is going to star Kate Beckinsale. It's eight episodes, and The Widow is going to follow uh, Georgia Wells, played by Beckinsale, a woman who has cut herself off from her previous life, but is pulled back in to face that world after seeing her supposedly deceased husband on the news. The thriller will take sorry. The thriller will take her into the depths of the African Congo, where danger and revelation will greet her at every turn, as she stops at nothing to get to the truth about her past. I'll say this: that got a lot more interest when it said African Congo, because up until it, then, uh, it, it sounded standard. But yeah, that's not. You know, sometimes these things do sound pretty standard and can be really good. The other but, thing that sticks out to me, though, is that it, I was just getting a lot of Double Jeopardy vibes. I don't know if you ever saw that movie with Ashley Judd. No, I didn't. Basically, her husband fakes her, fakes his death. She goes to prison for it. And then, like, while she's in prison, she, like, hears him over the phone when she's talking to, like, the, the friend who's looking after her kid. And she escapes with the... Or she didn't escape. She, she gets on parole, but she goes. To, she plans to kill her husband because it's Double Jeopardy because you can't be accused of doing the exact same crime twice. Mm. You can't kill the same person twice, so she could theoretically do it and get away with it. Get she's away already, with it, yeah. yeah. Uh, it's kind of a bullshit rule, that. Sorry? It's a bullshit rule. Uh, sure. Well, I mean, yeah, if that wasn't a rule, then you would you would just, like, get him in prison for faking his death and putting wasting everyone's time. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and wasting her life and sending her to prison. Defamation, at the very least, defamation's a thing here. <laughs> yes, at the very least. You, 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 you've, you've, you've made her a killer. Intentionally. Yeah. yeah. So, yeah. Uh, but yeah, it made me think of that a little bit. Okay. Because she thinks no, her husband's I mean, dead and then she finds no, out No, no, I'm, I'm with you. I, it sounds okay. I like Kate Beckinsale. I like her in theory, but I can actually think of Beth and I like her in. I'm not saying she's in a lot of good things. I just necessarily I like her. What, you mean she's attractive? Is that what you're getting? No, at? no, no. I, I even when she's not in good movies, I still think she's pretty good. I don't know. I just think of that horrible Van Helsing movie. <laughs> and I, I think yeah. of, I think of yeah, Underworld, okay, I which, I, which I also think is terrible. Yeah, Underworld's not great, but I think she's all right in them still. So I think of two really bad movies from a really bad time in movie making. That early two thousands period, where you had these really bad blockbusters. That she seemed to be in a lot of them. Yeah, I can't argue with that. And then she was in some romantic comedies. I, I really can't think of it and I actually like her. And so someone can tell me, tell me a good movie that Kate Beckinsale's in. I'll happily accept it. I just I can't think of one. <laughs> no, no, that's fair. I'm trying to think of a, what's what's a movie that's actually good that she's in. I'm not sure. She was kind of this actress that they kind of, you know, started throwing around all these these names. She was, just, she was everywhere for about four or five years, but not in a lot of good things apparently, because we can't think no, of any. No. Uh, all right, moving on. FX have given a, a a series order to a new show from Ryan Murphy, which is like the fifth show he does on that channel. <laughs> My God, people just let him do anything. It's called Pose. It is a period piece set in the mid nineteen eighties New York City. Pose examines the juxtaposition of several segments of life and society in Manhattan, the emergence of the luxury Trump era universe, the ball culture world, and downtown social and literary scene. Uh, me, me butchering the word literary, literary uh, is not because I can't speak tonight. It's just I can never say that word. So that's just a that's that's. I'll, I'll let that one slide because yeah. I know you've 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 screwed that one up before. Yeah. I'm amazed that I got juxtaposition fine though. I never even I even phased myself at that word for somehow. Ah, uh, I really wish you'd screwed it up on that time. Nah, nah, easy. Uh, what's interesting about this is that uh, Tatiana Maslany was meant to be in the show. She was meant to be the lead star, but she had to pull out uh, for reasons. Do we know the reasons or just just reasons? No, I think it was. Uh, I think it was a scheduling thing. Even I mean, I think it may have just been like yeah, it, okay. it went on That's too long stack. and yeah. 
Uh, like, it kept getting pushed back and eventually she had to pull out. Uh, I could be wrong, but uh, that, that's the impression I'm getting. Uh, but she's been replaced... The, the, the role was reworked slightly and she's been replaced with Charlene Woodard, uh, who's going to be the lead now. Uh, Evan Peters is in it, James Van Der Beek's in it, that's Dawson from Dawson's Creek. Uh, Kate Mara's in it. So you guys got a bit of a cast. Uh, okay. Notably, it's also set to feature the largest cast of transgender actors ever uh, for a scripted television series. So... Okay. Uh, this is kind of... This falls into the category where there's not a whole lot of plot here. I'm getting that it's going to be like the Deuce, but for 1980s. That's what it kind of sounds like to me. Just, I'm interested in all the cast, you know, the general idea. Mm. I don't know what it is, and I don't know how much I trust Ryan Murphy. Yeah, Ryan Murphy, for me, has one hit, and... I mean, it's really just one miss, because I've not even tried a lot of his shows, but, you know, American Horror Story, I think it's complete garbage. Uh, Scream Queens, actually really good. A lot of fun. Yeah, and then right in the middle of that, you've got Glee. I'm pretty sure that's him as well. Oh, that is him, yeah. Which, to be fair, I did see an episode of that, but I mean, I can't really say, fault that and say, oh, that's terrible. I it's cl- doing what it's supposed to. Yeah, I don't like it because I just I was never going to like that show. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It, it, yeah. And this is the thing, I was just like, okay, I don't know how I feel about him as a, as a showrunner because they say, okay, I've got something that I really like, but then he's got a lot of other shit. Yeah. Uh, so, so expectations are low. Yeah, uh, especially since this feels like something that should have a more of a serious bent to it. Uh, you know, if, I, if, I, if I'm comparing in my, in, the, in my head to the Deuce, I feel like yeah. I don't think he's I, up to that. <laughs> that's the thing. Maybe it will attempt to be that, but I don't know if he can pull it off. Hey uh, But we mentioned Tatiana Maslany from Orphan Black. Orphan Black's a show uh, that's uh, got already cancelled potential written all over it someday. It is. That's on, that's on my list. So it's on the on the list. Under Babylon Five, but it's on the list. Uh, we'll debate the order later. <laughs> uh, speaking of FX, they've also officially greenlit Mayans MC, which is the spin-off of Sons of Anarchy. Uh, ten episode season order, and it's going to premiere later this year. So hey, here's an example of them greenlighting something just now, and it's uh, uh, this year. and also we don't give a shit. Oh, we don't. We don't care about this at all. <laughs> but I'm just saying, here's an example of something being green, greenlit yeah, yeah. right now for cable. You, you, no, no. The only reason they can get that out then is because ah, okay, well, we don't really care about the quality of this. We'll just churn it out. The ones that we care about the quality for, they're going to take the time with, and they're going to be next year. I have proof that that is an incorrect statement. Oh, go on. They reshot the entire pilot and recast the whole thing. Because they cared so much about getting it right. <laughs> so I'm going to dispute that they don't care about this. <laughs> okay, well, let's say they don't care about it. I mean, yeah, sure, they care about making it, you know, good for what you know for their audience. But is it good, really? Your entire argument was that they're going to shut it out quickly because they don't care about the quality. Uh, okay, what, what I mean, the quality compared to some of the other stuff we're talking about <laughs> where we're going, oh, maybe we could get that this year. No, no, no. they just... care. This is just, okay, no, this is another one. Just accept I gave a good rebuttal for the statement you just... Not that I care. I don't care about this show. I don't care if it's shit. <laughs> you know I don't care if it's shit, because I don't care about Sons of Anarchy. I like the way you, you forgot what show you it was a spin-off for then, for a second. For like a split second, that... Yeah, that, well, you start to think about it. That was just me thinking of the came. words. That was no different from just thinking halfway through a sentence about anything. But... Take my victory where I can. Just because I, I just, just, just... You got beat, beat on the, the rest of it. That yes. is up to the audience to decide. <laughs> they're just shitting this out. I don't care how good it is, Connor. They reshot the pilot and recast the whole thing because they didn't think it was good enough. Well, yeah, they, yeah, they don't care enough. The rest of the season would be good enough. The goalposts were moving there. That's all I'm saying. You moved yeah, the goalposts. Yeah. Look, they cared about the pilot because it's a pilot. And they're like, okay, and they're like, all right, fine. Second attempt, all right, I guess that'll do. Okay, uh, CBS All Access have uh, greenlit a show called Strange Angel. It's coming from Scott Free Productions, which is of course Ridley Scott's company. Uh, created by Mark Heyman. It is based on George Pendle's book of the same name. Uh, Strange Angel is inspired by the real life story of Jack Parsons and explores the dramatic intersection between genius and madness, science and science fiction. Uh, so here's the actual sort of more in-depth uh, plot of it. Rainer will play Jack Parsons, a brilliant and ambitious blue-collar worker of 1930s Los Angeles, who has started who started as a janitor at a chemical factory, but had fantastical dreams that led him to the birth of the unknown. Uh, sorry, the birth of the I, I thought that was the end of the sentence. The birth of the unknown discipline of American rocketry. 
You can see why I lone worked at the end of that sentence. No, no, no I did, but I was like, uh, okay, but what's what, what, what did he do? Along the way, he fell into a mysterious world that included sex magic rituals at night, and he became a disciple of occultist Alistair Crowley. Uh, yeah, uh, Parsons used Crowley's teachings of sylv actualization to support his unimaginable and unprecedented endeavor to the stars. So he was, he was, he, he, he was the start of the rocket program. He was kind of. Part of that, I don't know if he was pioneering it or whatever. I'm not as familiar with the the, the person so much. I did recognise the name Alistair Crowley though. That that name stuck out to me. I should hope so. It's yeah. pretty famous. But uh, yeah, so that's an okay uh, thing. To, but, but, I mean, the idea that he was in a cult at night and then he was trying to help the, the rocket program, especially in the 1930s. I feel like the 1930s is a really interesting time for someone to have that dream because you know it hadn't been realised yet. Like, he really like if he's having that dream, he's really pioneering that because that's oh yeah yeah, and also. Cult stuff is cool on TV. <laughs> sure. Not, not, no, 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 I'm not saying go out and do satanic rituals. Don't, you know, don't do that, kids. But it, it, it can make for some good TV or what, movies. What kids do you think are watching this or listening to this? <laughs> I don't know. They, they must have turned it off a long time ago. We, we, we don't have no clickbait titles. I like the idea that there's one weird teenager who really likes us. <laughs> just, just one. Just one. Just one weirdo. Yeah, you're on your own, kid. And hey, hey, I, I approve of you, kid. Hey, be, be a weirdo. Weirdos yeah. are better. That's all I'm saying. Good, good taste. <laughs> Maybe. Uh, all right, moving on. We're in the network stuff now. Uh, right. So we have a show called The <laughs> the Viagra Diaries, uh, which I love because it's clearly... I mean, it's not. I mean, it's based on a book, I think, of the same name. But I love the... It sounds like it's like a play on the like the Vampire Diaries, which was does, also CW. Yeah. I, I, I love that. It's great. Uh, but yeah, so uh, Jesse Can Wheeler is uh, signed on to sort of uh, adapt it and do it. Uh, so, based on the book by Barbara Rose Booker, the Viagra Diaries centers on Kit, a gorgeous intern in town who gets the break of a lifetime when she poses as the online avatar for her literary... That's that word again, God damn it. Her literary hero, Annie, a 40-year-old journalist fighting to stay relevant. Annie must keep her true identity hidden, just as <laughs> hidden uh, must keep her true identity hidden as her writing finds a new worldwide audience, and Kit gets all the credit. So basically, you've got this uh, older writer, this new intern, starts you know shadowing her and writing stuff for her on the internet, and becomes uh, a thing. I- I'm fine if this never exists. <laughs> what I think is really funny is it reminded me of another premise. It may- I don't know if it's a CW. But uh, sometime in the last couple of months, there was a premise for a show, which I compared to a superhero show, where it was like a, it was someone who had a big famous book, but no one knew it was her. It was she was like a, she had just, just a pen name. Yeah. And uh, I, I compared it to this like superheroes like secret identity thing. It was kind of reminded me of that a little bit because uh, it was you know secretly not her. Yeah. Kind of yeah sure. But well, I don't hate it, but just, yeah, oh, I, I do. Know. I'm not really interested in it. I, I, I didn't like anything in that sentences. Uh, I wanted to say sentence, and then I should have said paragraph. <laughs> hey, it's not just me butchering the language today. <laughs> yeah, no, no. I, 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 I changed my mind halfway through a word. But no, so I. Uh, it's, it's fine. I, I don't mind with this existing at all. It's fine. As long as you don't make me watch it. <laughs> no plans. No plans to. <laughs> All right, so we are on to a pair of shows from Fox, which actually round out the news this week. Uh, they're both from Eva Longoria, <laughs> so there you go. Uh, the first one's untitled. Uh, it's referred to as the Untitled LA Woman Project. Uh, so it centers on longtime friends, uh, R- Reza or Reza, Reza. It's just one, one Reza. Z. I'll say, I'll say Reza. Reza, June, Amelia, and Indy. Oh, Indy's a fun name. Is it? Yeah, because you can, you can make a lot of puns about being independent. Uh, I suppose you could. I'm independent, damn it. It's in the name. <laughs> Jesus, no one let you name kids. <laughs> so, someone comes out and says, M- my middle name's independent. Well, it's my first name. <laughs> Please, never name kids. <laughs> I'm not saying I would name someone in I'm just, just saying... No, no, no. You, you should have no responsibility. <laughs> nah, I'll, I'll, I'll name... I'll name kids something cool. No, I, I shut you not. My ki- if I have a kid, my kid's middle name will be Danger. Yeah, yeah. You you really think you're going to get someone who allows that? If they put up with me, they, they at least have some sense of humour. 
Well, yeah, but uh, you'd, you'd drive me insane otherwise. I'm not, I'm not saying the first name should be stupid. I'm just saying sneak in the middle name Danger. Just go on. Let, let, let them be called. This is just so every so often they could say Danger's my middle name. And no, seriously, Danger's my middle name. I'm not kidding. Here's my birth certificate. And th- this, this is why you get no responsibility with naming kids. <laughs> this right here. Hey, we've got boring names. Look, I'm just saying, give the kid a chance with something, something extravagant. No, no, no. Boring names are safe. Although if it's a girl, and I, I try to slip in Buffy, I'll see. I'll see how that goes down. <laughs> see, see how that. How, how, because that's you the can, thing. You though. cannot refer to your daughter as a hit television. Show. <laughs> No, no, I'll refer to her as the offspring of. Uh... <laughs> no, no. You, you are the the especially when she's a teenager. But you are the hit teenager. <laughs> I'll think. I'll think of a witty way of doing this. I promise. You've got. You've got plenty of years to come up with it. Yeah, 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 yeah. Even if she's born like next year. Yeah, but I got. I got. I got thirteen years to think of the teenage catchphrase. Yeah. Oh dear. Uh, where was it? What, what were these fuck shows? Oh yeah, so Razor, June, Amelia and Indy uh, are the characters. Uh, they have climbed to the top of the Hollywood ladder together as a lawyer, an actress, a writer-producer and an entrepreneur. Uh, it looks pretty enviable from the outside and they all enjoy the many perks of their high-flying lifestyles. But there's no such thing as having it all, at least not all at the same time. Each of them has made a significant sacrifice to get where they are. When faced when a, sorry, <laughs> when a face from their past resurfaces in the pilot, they have to confront some ugly buried secrets and protect their lives from being destroyed. Do you know what? I don't think that's interesting, but I think the way they phrase it, you know, they said, oh, when this happens in the pilot. I don't think I've ever seen to a, a, you know, a TV show description you know, refer to it like that before. It's kinda, always just when this happens. I kind of like it. There's an honesty to it that says this is the pilot sort of launching point. And yeah, I, I, it's interesting. I've never, I've just, I've never seen that before. It's always, you know, oh, when this happens, then you know, that's when things really go down. It's never gone. Oh, in the pilot, we'll do this, and then we'll go forward from there. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. I don't care uh, about the show though. Yeah, the other show that Fox are also eyeing up is called Sidekicks, and it's not a superhero I'm, I'm show. I'm more into this. Oh, okay, never mind. But it is a buddy cop show. Oh, oh, here we go. First one of the year. Yeah, where one of them's. Something. Something. Yeah. Uh, Sidekicks is about an ambitious young Detroit police detective, Shay Kendricks, who is forced to team up with her newly paroled criminal informant, who also just happens to be... Didn't we have this, like, three months ago? I can't remember. (laughs) I feel feel like criminal informant is one we had about three months ago. But, in that show, was the criminal informant her dad? It might have been. I feel like we've had this exact thing before. I don't remember oh, that, or I'm just having major deja vu. You know, I, yeah, maybe there was something similar, but yeah. So when well, Benny Kendricks quickly becomes a secret weapon in solving cases. He also shakes up Shay's emotional life, pushing her to reconcile with the past and her and, and the feelings she'd rather avoid. A character procedural that is centered around the love that exists between a father and a daughter. I swear I've heard every word of that before. <laughs> <laughs> Like, I believe you that this is new and, you know, you've just found this today. I mean, it was in the same you're... article as the uh, the Elliot Women one. It was the same thing. They came as no, a no, pair. No, thing. I, be- I believe you, but I swear I've heard that, like, almost word for word. <laughs> and I don't know if that's just a sign of, okay, there's too many of these now. Or if I'm just going crazy. <laughs> it's a buddy cop show, but one of them's a criminal informant, also her father. <laughs> yeah, I mean... Way to go, Fox! Starting off the year on form. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you, 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 you're sticking to the your your, your reputation, your content. <sighs> We're one for one in in weeks where we have buddy cop with a twist. Oh well, I guess that's uh, I guess that wraps up the news for the for the, for the week. Somehow we went quite long on that, and I, I don't think it was actually enough news to justify that one time. Bollocks for half of it. Oh dear. Uh, so this is the time where we normally pick our favourite episode of TV of the week, which again is a bit weird because it's been three yeah, weeks yeah, and... And, and John, I'm going to make it even weirder. Okay. I, I am refusing to pick an episode of Black Mirror because we have not done our ranked video yet. And I That's don't want true. to spoil this. Even for you, I don't want to spoil... Just, you know, definitive... I mean, it's out of, like, let's be honest, it's out of two or three. But I don't want yeah. to say which one it is. Okay, so... We'll find out why Connor's favourite episode is Crocodile in the ranked video. Uh, <laughs> that, that would be a bold choice. <laughs> coming up over the weekend. Um, 
All right, so what, so we're picking a favorite episode of Travelers. <laughs> is that what we're doing? <laughs> I don't, I don't know. It's a really weird time to do it, isn't it? Uh, Wait, fine. Episode 7 of Travellers, 17 minutes. That's my favourite. There you oh, go. Oh, that was a great episode. I'll go with that. Yeah, that's the, sure. that's the pick. Sure, let's 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 go with it. That's the pick. There you go. Easy, done. Luckily, um, we'll have it... Next week's will also be kind of weird. There won't be much else either. Star Trek's back, but that's about it. Uh, uh, and Shield, actually. And, and Shield. Shield. Uh, the following week, though, uh, we get all the CW shows back, so we get a bit more content so which we still don't really pick from for this because i haven't watched them till after we record this okay tr- okay fine the week starting the 22nd we get the or actually that's the sunday the 21st we get the counterpart premiere uh with the jk7 sci-fi show looking forward to that the alienist is on monday the 22nd uh we might try that bellevue show with uh, anna paquin that's on that week as well uh so that, we do. i don't even remember that <laughs> Murder, murder mystery and it's someone maybe from her past that's involved uh, in killing uh, someone. Okay, I'm yeah. on you. I mean, the trailer wasn't so hot, but uh, that's, there's potential there. I don't know. Okay. Uh, so we'll maybe do that, but definitely the counterpart in Alienist will definitely be tried. Uh, I'm looking yeah. forward to the counterpart in particular. Uh, so uh, there's things happening, and then we get to February and we get Altered Carbon and uh, you know Here and Now's premiere, as we mentioned. February. Yeah, yeah. So, TV starts properly. Yeah. Uh, so there you go. That, that's that's the thing. Uh, so so we have, you know, once we're done with travels, we've got three episodes left to record. Uh, we will have a few weeks, and then Alter Carbon's the first binge. Oh wait, that's not that's a lie because the tech's back on in January, isn't it? Is it? I'm sure. As was it February? Maybe it's February. I mean, I, I you might be right. Don't get me wrong. Where did we have it? I'm just trying to see. Uh, so it's February. Yeah, I, I'm just I'm I'm adding things to the schedule. Ignore me. <laughs> <sighs> ignore me so we're starting off the quality high in 2018 with this episode well, I mean news. you know start as you mean to finish <laughs> that's true we can have an arc we'll, we'll go up we'll, we'll peak in the middle of the year it'll be really good it'll be really professional and then late, late start June will be incredible you and watch. then we'll just dip 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 and then we'll get to you know just before we go on Christmas break at the end of the year and it'll just be the absolute dire again uh, but people seem to like it so we'll, 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 who, who am I to judge yeah, and you know they might be getting even more of it soon. They may. In fact, there were the, we we almost thought we'd be doing the movie news this week for the first time. We're at, we're literally uh, a dollar away on Patreon from hitting that goal, which will unlock the movie news show for everyone. So hey, what a time to plug Patreon? Patreon dot com slash Mailfuzz TV. There's a bit link to that in the description, and you can find some other useful links down there. Uh, so it shouldn't be too well, long before we're doing that. Yeah, look at that. We came full circle at the start of the show. You hated on me for you know giving you your lead in. And here we go. There was a nice natural lead in at the end. We got an arc already. You ruined it by over explaining it there at the end. Oh, uh, yeah, but I, 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 we're growing. There's an arc. <laughs> uh, I've got a few metal bars that I'd love to see an arc in after I bash you in the head with them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I like that you're, you're implying my, my head is perfectly strong enough to take the bars and bend them, and it's fine. It's the ginger hair. Yeah, it's a magical shield. <laughs> Let's test that theory, shall we? Uh, so... Sure, we can test it as long as I have a helmet on too. No. <laughs> Damn it. No. You can dodge a wrench, you can dodge a ball. Do you think I can dodge a wrench? <laughs> I'm about to find out. <laughs> <laughs> so, so no, that's uh, just a hint of some of the stuff coming up in the next, the first few months of uh, the... Obviously, Black Lightning is the new CW show. Uh, we will do an individual thing for that, although it will also be edited into the, the TV DC Multiverse podcast that we do. Um, but uh, after the first episode, it'll just be part of that podcast rather than its own individual thing each week. Uh, same goes for Krypton when that launches in March as well. Uh, yeah, is... we, we, we actually know that's coming in March. That's, that's weird. Still no specific date, though, for it, may I add. No, okay, but we've got to find out soon enough yeah. in the next few weeks, I imagine. Yeah, uh, in terms of anything else, obviously Jessica Jones is in March. Unfortunate events we mentioned earlier was in March. Uh, also in March, uh, actually February, sorry, is Channel Zero season three. Uh, yeah, we. I, I feel like we just finished season two. Uh, but cool. Butcher's Block starting in February, so that's a thing. Um, but there you go. So that that is that is everything. That is that is as updated as updated could be at this point in time. Yeah, so I'm 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 looking at our schedule on the other screen, and, and Peter mentioned to me the other day that he's added in a bunch of new you know premieres and you know, uh-huh. potential things to look at, and I'm I'm only just looking for the first time. I'm going, what the hell's this? 
Like there, there was just I'm not, I'm naming no names, but just a few shows here. I'm going. I have no idea what this is. Good. <laughs> Keep him on his toes. That's what that's, that's what I like to do. I, I, I don't know. if I Should be worried or excited. <laughs> do you know what one of them is though? Go on. Your mermaid shows get a date in March. Oh, oh, oh! In March? Oh, really? In March when everything else is really busy? Yeah, it's launching the same day as a Netflix show. So I, I've got a feeling we might just not do it because we're too busy. But I know you really want to do that first double episode of Siren, the freeform mermaid show. Mermaid war show. It, the, the war is important. It is sentence. not going to feel like a war. The war. I mean, they'll mention a war, but it's going to be this teen it's soapy know, drama I know, bullshit. I, w- I want a mermaid war. Is that too much to ask for freeform? It's going to be the OC with like fins. <laughs> with fins, yeah, yeah, it might be, it might be, it might, it probably will be. Yeah, it's going to be awful. <laughs> oh. oh dear. That is us. That is the first news of uh, 2018. So hopefully you've enjoyed the rambles that we, we typically go into. So like, subscribe, all the usual stuff. Let us know what you think of the news in the comments. Um, actually, do you know what? I'm going to start a new thing at the end of the news show. For 2018, we've got a new new feature. I'm okay, I'm worried. At the very end, you, you, you're, you're throwing this out off the cuff, and this could be awful. It's a small thing. It's a small thing. Favorite news of the show. Oh Christ! You're making me actually think of what you said. <laughs> <laughs> um, um, hang on. <laughs> let, let me wreck my brains back to the interesting stuff at the start. Oh God. Uh, uh, let, let's go with a safe bet. Legion coming back roughly when we expected it. Okay, okay. That's boring, though. I felt like we were going to pick one of the new shows or something like that. No, or, or I mean, casting, if you want to really go with the new shows, it's the, the, the George R. R. Martin one. Ah, the Night Flyers. One. Yeah. I agree. I'm actually going to say my most excited one, though, is probably the Sabrina casting. I, I like, I'm glad that that's churning along. No, that's true. I, I think that show has the right amount of potential balanced with the right amount of nostalgia. That it just, it's, it's hitting a nice could, sweet could spot. could be amazing, yeah. Yeah, it's hitting a nice sweet spot for me personally, but... You know, it's it's the follow-up. I don't, I don't, I don't know why that means sweet movie. spot. I don't know why I'm doing that for sweet <laughs> spot, but I am. The audio people don't know what I was doing there, but let's just leave it at that. Just, just being weird. It's just, yeah. Yeah. You, you don't want to know. Hey, we've been recording for a while. We recorded some reviews before this. It's getting loopy. It's, it's, I'm getting pretty hungry, I'm not going to lie. I'm hungry. Uh, I'm going to go eat after I, we're I done think this. it shows, doesn't it? A little bit, a little bit. So that is, that, <laughs> that is the news. Uh, so... Thank you. I, I did all the plugging basically, so yeah, that's us. Uh, so check out everything else on the channel. Um, if you're on the audio feed, the movie show when it starts uh, will be on the same feed, so it'll just be the two alternate on the same feed. Uh, but you know, uh, all the usual things. So thank you very much. Uh, Happy New Year, I guess, uh, since 2018. Uh, it's a pleasure to be back, and we'll be back next week with more news and rambles and tangents. And we'll see you then. So keep watching TV. Have you got any vanilla?